In this video, we're going to complete example two, and we're going to learn how to add and subtract thirds. I would like to point out that at the moment, you can only see two questions. There are other slides I'm going to go through on this video. So altogether, there's going to be eight questions in total. We're going to finish on question eight. Now, before we get into the example, we're going to have a little discussion. And I want to mention that when you add and subtract thirds, it works in the same way as when you add and subtract algebraic expressions. So I'll give you an example of this. If I take 2x and add it to 3x, this expression will simplify to 5x. We call this collecting like terms. What makes the 2x and the 3x like terms? Well, it's because they share the same set of pronumerals. They both have the single pronumeral of x. When this happens, we can simply add the coefficients. 2 plus 3 is 5, and the pronumeral remains the same. It remains as x. So how does this relate to thirds? Well, let's say we had 2 root 7 plus 3 root 7. Once again, we have like terms, and the reason they're like terms is because they have the same third, root 7. So we can simply add the coefficients. 2 plus 3 is 5, and the third remains the same. It remains as root 7. Let's look at another example. Let's say we have 2a plus 3a plus 10b. Now you might remember that you can only combine like terms. We can only combine the 2a with the 3a. Now 2a plus 3a is 5a. So what do we do with what's left over, the 10b? Well, it remains separate. So we write our simplified expression as 5a plus 10b. How would this relate to thirds? Well, we might have 2 root 7 plus 3 root 7. And then we're going to add this to 10 root 2. Once again, we can only combine like terms. So we can combine the 3 root 7 with the 2 root 7. When we add the coefficients, 2 plus 3 is 5. And the third remains the same. It remains as root 7. Now we still have the 10 root 2 here, which is an unlike term. So we need to keep that separate. We write it to the right as plus 10 root 2. Anyway, I think it's time for us to get into the example now. <clears throat> Starting with question A, you'll notice that we have like terms. Both terms have a root 2. So we simply add or subtract the coefficients. 5 minus 3 is 2. And then the third remains the same. So it remains as root 2. Moving on to question B, we have three like terms. They all have the third root 3. You'll notice the one in the middle has no number to the left of it. Now, just like in algebra, if there's no number, there's technically a 1 there. So when we add or subtract the coefficients, we get 4 plus 1 is 5, minus 2 is 3. So we get 3, and the third remains the same. It remains as the square root of 3. All right. Time to move on to question C. What are our like terms here? We've got 6 root 7, and then we've got another root 7 here. Remembering that we have a coefficient of 1 next to our root 7. So we simply go 6 plus 1, which is 7. And we keep the third the same. We keep it as root 7. All right, we also have a root 5 here. Now, being careful, this is negative 4 root 5, and the other third, which has a root 5, is over here, and we're adding 2 root 5. So negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, so we write this as minus 2, and we write next to that the same third of root 5. Okay, now when we look at question D, it looks like we can't do anything here. We don't have any like terms. But you might remember in the previous video, I mentioned that you can simplify thirds. 
So we're going to simplify root 8. And we're going to do that by splitting it into two thirds. We'll split it into root 4 times root 2. And I'm allowed to do that because 4 times 2 is 8. Now 4 is a perfect square, so root 4 is 2. It's a nice whole number. And 2 times root 2 can be written as 2 root 2. So I'm going to rewrite my root 8 as 2 root 2, and then I'm subtracting this by root 2. Now after simplifying root 8, I now have an expression where I have two like terms, remembering that my root 2 has a coefficient of 1. So I simply subtract these coefficients, I go 2 minus 1, which is 1, and then my thirds remain the same, they remain as root 2. And 1 root 2 is the same as just writing root 2 without the 1. Okay, now moving on to question E. So it's getting tougher now. It looks like we have three terms that are not alike. But if we simplify them, maybe we can make them so that they are like terms. Let's focus on the root 44. Can I simplify the square root of 44? Well, I can split that into root 4 times root 11. Because 4 times 11 is 44. Now, 4 is a perfect square, so the square root of 4 becomes 2. And next to that, I write my root 11. Now, that's great because the square root of 44 is now 2 root 11. And I've also got a 5 root 11. So I've got two thirds that are now alike. Let's now look at the root 99. Can I split this into two parts? Well, yes, I can make this the square root of 9 times the square root of 11, which is great because if I can make every third here, the square root of 11, then I can combine all of them. The square root of 9 is 3, which is perfect. I now get 3 root 11. I'm just going to move my working out down. All right, so we mentioned that the square root of 44 is 2 root 11, so I'm going to rewrite that as 2 root 11. I'm going to keep my 5 root 11 the same, and then my root 99 is the same as 3 root 11. So I'm going to go plus 3 root 11. Excellent. So now I have three like terms, and I can simply go 2 minus 5, which is negative 3, plus 3 is actually 0. So I get 0 next to my square root of 11, and that's actually the same as just zero. All right, moving on to question F now. None of my terms are alike. I'm going to try my best to make them like terms. You'll notice I've got a three root seven here. So I'm looking at these, and I'm thinking, okay, I know that seven fits into 28 and seven fits into 63. So I reckon maybe all three of these can be turned into a third with a square root of 7. So we'll start with the 2 root 28. I'll write that one down below in red. So 2 root 28. I'm going to make that 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. I'm, I'm trying to bring in this square root of 7 here, and it, and it seems to be working because the square root of 4 is 2. So 2 times 2 times the square root of 7 and 2 times 2 is 4, so that's going to work out nicely. We've got 4 root 7. Perfect. In fact, I'm going to write that down. My first term is 3 root 7, and my second term here has been changed into 4 root 7. So I've now got two terms that are alike. What about the square root of 63? I'll write that down below in green, the square root of 63. I'm really hoping I can get a factor of 7 here. So I want a square root of 7, and that's going to work because 7 times 9 is 63. So I simply need 
the square root of 9 times the square root of 7. And the square root of 9 is 3. So we're going to have 3 root 7, which is perfect. That means I can replace the square root of 63 with 3 root 7. What about my final third here? We've got 175. I'm going to bring up the calculator and I'm going to divide it by 7. I'm really hoping it has a factor of 7. And it does. 7 times 25 makes 175. So the square root of 175 is the same as the square root of 25 times the square root of 7, which can be rewritten as 5 root 7. Perfect. So I'm going to rewrite this third of root 175 as 5 root 7. I now have four terms that are all alike, so I can simply add and subtract my coefficients. So what am I going to get? 3 minus 4 is negative 1, plus 3 is positive 2, and minus 5 is negative 3. So I'm going to get negative 3, and the third remains the same as root 7. Okay, now moving on to question G. I've got a 10, I've got two 40s, and a 52. Now, looking at these 40s here, I reckon I can turn them into a third with a root 10. So I'll start with um, the 3 root 40, down below, 3 root 40. And I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times root 4 times root 10. And I could do that because root 4 times root 10 is root 40. And it's going to work really nicely because the square root of 4 is 2. And 3 times 2 is 6. So I'm going to get 6 root 10, which is great. So that means that my first term is root 10. So that's going to stay the same. And my second term is going to change from 3 root 40 into 6 root 10. Let's look at the third term now. We've got 5 root 40. I'll do that one in green. 5 root 40. I'm going to rewrite that as 5 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. And that's fine because 4 times 10 is 40. And it's going to work really well because the square root of 4 is 2. It's a nice whole number. 5 times 2 times root 10. And 5 times 2 is 10. So I'm going to get 10 root 10. And I'll write that up above. I'm changing 5 root 40 into 10 root 10 and this time I'm subtracting it. So what about the 52 here? Um, I'm going to bring up my calculator. There's no way I can divide 52 by 10. So I really don't think I can combine this with the other terms. But I should at least be simplifying this because the question says to simplify the following. Is there a perfect square that fits into 52? Um, I think 4 fits into 52. Let's have a look. Yeah, 4 fits into 52 13 times. So all we can do is simplify that one. So the square root of 52 can be made by multiplying 4, or the square root of 4, by 13. And that's going to give us 2 root 13, which is not a like term, but at least I've simplified it. So I'm changing root 52 into 2 root 13. So I'm really only combining the first three terms. So the first term technically has a 1 next to it. So 1 plus 6 is 7, minus 10 is negative 3. So we've got negative 3, and next to that I put the same third, root 10. And then I've got this separate third that is not a like term, and that's 2 root 13, so I keep it separate. I write plus 2 root 13. All right, now moving on to question H, which I assume will be our hardest question. Looking at the first third here, I've got a root 5, and then the other three are all very different. So what I think I'll do is I'll bring up my calculator. I can see that the second third has a 54 under the radical. There's no way I can put a 5 into that. Uh, but I reckon the 45 will. I'm just going to kind of test it out. What's 45 divide 5? 
that's 9, that's really good, 9's a perfect square. And what about 150? Can I divide that by 5 as well? And I get 30, but that's not, that's not a perfect square. So what I think I'll do at the moment is, let's just focus on the 2 root 45. So 2 root 45 is the same as 2 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Because 9 times 5 is 45. Now the square root of 9 is 3, so this becomes 2 times 3 times the square root of 5, which is 6 root 5. So that's looking great, because now we've got two thirds that will have like terms. This third will become 6 root 5, which has the same third as 4 root 5. Now at the moment, the other two thirds are not going to combine, but I still want to simplify them. And if I simplify them, I might find that these two will combine, just separate to the other thirds. So we'll start with the 3 root 54. So 3 root 54. What numbers multiply to make 54? Well, 9 times 6 makes 54. And that's going to work really well because 9 is a perfect square. All right, so the square root of 9 is 3, so we get 3 times 3 times the square root of 6, and 3 times 3 is 9, so we get 9 root 6. So I'm just thinking to myself, if I can change the third so I get a 6 under the radical, can I do the same with my third at the end? I'm going to check that with the calculator. 150 divide 6. is 25. That's great. That's a perfect square. So what I'm going to do is I'll do this one in green again. So taking the square root of 150, it's the same as the square root of 25 times the square root of 6. And the square root of 25 is 5. So this becomes 5 root 6. All right. So going back to the original expression, I'm going to keep the 4 root 5 the same. So 4 root 5. The 3 root 54 was changed to 9 root 6. So we're going to write minus 9 root 6. The 2 root 45 was changed to 6 root 5. So minus 6 root 5. And the root 150 was changed to 5 root 6. So we're going to write down minus 5 root 6. Excellent. So now we can combine some like terms. We can go 4 root 5 minus 6 root 5. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So we get negative 2 root 5. And then negative 9 root 6 minus 5 root 6. Negative 9 minus 5 is minus 14. And we keep the third the same. We write down root 6. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 2. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.